Previously, we calculated the average speed of a runner as 9.6 meters per second. Is that how fast the runner was traveling at the finish line? Probably not. There are fundamentally two different ways of determining speed. They are the average and instantaneous speeds. Here is a general example of a position time graph. If you would like to measure the speed over any time interval, for example, the interval from A to B, you would measure the change in position divided by the change in time. This is also known as the rise over the run. This gives you average speed. The average speed over this time interval is the slope of the line AB. This graph shows the position over time of a sprinter completing a 100 meter race. From 6 seconds to 10 seconds, we can easily measure the speed. Why can we easily measure the speed? In this example, we measure the change in position as 100 minus 40 equals 60 meters, and the change in time, 10 minus 6 equals 4 seconds. So the average speed equals 60 divided by 4 equals 15 meters per second. Understanding the graphical representation of the data helps us understand the difference between the instantaneous and average and helps us calculate how fast our runner is at the finish line. How do we find the speed when it's not a straight line? There are two ways. There's the average speed over a time interval, which is the distance over time, as we have learned, or we could find the speed at a particular instant. How can we do that? We could use the rise over run over a smaller time interval to give us a closer estimate of the speed at that instant, we will measure the speed at four seconds. For example, if we wanted to measure the average speed at point A, we draw a secant to the curve from point A to point B. Just as we measured the slope of the graph for the section with uniform slope, we can measure the gradient of the secant as a measure of the average speed over this time interval. The average speed is 11 meters per second. If we reduce the time interval involved from 4 to 5 seconds, we achieve a better estimate of the instantaneous speed at 4 seconds. We get 9 meters per second. The closer we get to 4 seconds, the closer we get to the instantaneous speed at 4 seconds. As B is moved close to A, the slope of the line AB is approximately the same as the gradient of the tangent drawn at A. We will use the tangent to the curve at a particular time to tell us the instantaneous speed at that time. Here's an example of how to find the instantaneous speed at 4 seconds. Draw the tangent to the curve at 4 seconds. Extend the tangent across the graph. Draw a right angled triangle with the tangent as the hypotenuse. Measure the rise and run on the triangle and use the formula speed equals distance over time to obtain your instantaneous value in meters per second. Here it's equal to 8.9 meters per second. The different methods of measuring speed covered in this movie are instantaneous and average. If the runner's speed is calculated using the total distance and elapsed time, we get the average speed. The speedometer in a car shows your instantaneous speed. The only way to determine the instantaneous speed graphically is to measure the gradient of the tangent at a particular instant. In practice, we measure the instantaneous speed by calculating the average speed over the smallest possible time interval.